Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima. Now, for those of you who don't know me, there is a couple of things about me you should know. One of them is that I do not like to be proven wrong on very many occasions. One of these occasions came very recently. This morning I woke up and I saw there was an email in my... Not an email, a message in my YouTube inbox that said... That was from Henchman Entertainment, the creators of this game, Pop Bug Zap. And it said... We're sure you'll enjoy this game, and we love the channel and all that. It obviously wasn't a sort of robot thing, it was an actual human being behind the pen. And, as I said, I don't like being proven wrong, so I downloaded the game thinking, Oh, this will probably be alright. I was wrong, I actually really like it. Yeah, that's that story went absolutely nowhere, so let's just hurry the hell up and play the game. One of the main problems has already popped up. This game has some... Pretty big performance problems. I would be harping on this game a lot if these performance problems stemmed into the actual game and if this game was a charged product, but no, it's free to play. So as you can see, the game actually does tend to freeze up a little bit here and there. Strangely enough, it doesn't stop the music, but it does stop all import and stuff like that. So that is something to keep in mind. It does not really affect the main game once you're actually playing the game, but in the menus and all that, it's a real, just like, yeah, I've said what I need to there. So, Pop Bugs Zap, which is a really weird name. Let's have a game and see what it's actually like. Once it decides it wants to load. There we go. If you've ever played OMG Zombies, you know exactly what this is like. What this game is, is basically a copy of OMG Zombies, but with bugs. The idea is that you tap a bug with a pin. And when you tap a bug, it will do some sort of thing. So for example, the one bug I tapped there was a... I don't remember the names of the bugs, I'm sorry, but... What, what that bug did was, it basically just stands still and punches everything it's near. That's actually kind of hilarious. I love it. A bug that stops and just punches every other bug in its region. That one I just popped there was a... It's just a normal bug, basically. That purple... These purple bugs are dragonflies, and the dragonflies... What they do is they just hop to something else that they can see. And the bees launch stingers. And so the idea is that you want to pop bugs as close to many other bugs as possible in order to create the longest chain imaginable. You get a limited amount of pins per level to actually do the pokings with. And if you pull it off successfully, you get stars. And stars are a currency in this game, and so are coins. If you tap on coins, you will pick them up. We'll go on to the next level. Rhinos can't be popped, rhinos can't be stopped. This game has a nice sense of humour. It's a sort of casualized style of humour, but I still like it a lot. Ladybugs drop extra pins, so if you pick them up, you will get more... Um, huh. Okay, let me try that again. We'll just hit, re we'll just hit restart here. Yeah, collected pins are extra, um, extra opportunities to poke stuff. As you can see here, this is obviously some sort of timing puzzle. Which I have probably failed miserably here. I have indeed failed miserably here. So we want to just get this timing right. That's not going to be right. Nope, that's definitely not going to be right. I'll just go home and I'll skip back a few levels. Um, no, I think I'll actually just... Let's go back just a little bit further here, so we'll, we'll do this instead. We'll, do, we'll just do in the forest. If you finish a level with at least one pick left, if you achieve the goal with at least one pick left, you will get what's referred to as a bonus round, and the bonus rounds are actually really cool. Because they let you earn extra points, and they also do silly things like spawn a ton of extra bugs in to help you get a lot of different bonus points. And I like that, I like that a lot. It, shows that they honestly thought about the way that these levels are designed because you're not going to get two stars by perfecting a level. You have to get, do really well on the bonus round as well. So it's a real combination of 
doing well enough on the actual levels in order to get the pins you need to get the bonus, and then actually doing well enough to earn the extra stars from the bonus. So let's see if we can figure out a decent way of... Let's see if we can figure out a decent area to pop so that we can get a lot of bugs and a lot of points. Just wait and see. So yeah, this game's actually kind of a challenge to figure out the puzzle elements of, and there's a lot of different bugs that you can get. I'll just pop this guy here. Wasn't as big as I hoped, but whatever. We can deal with that. How about this guy? Just... Okay. That'll... Oh, I still got one more left. We will wait and see. So yeah, this game is well designed. It is a... It is fun to play. You always get that one more... You always get that one more level, that one more, oh, I want to just buy an extra pointer, an extra pin in order to finish this level. So, I better talk about that, actually, because this game is free to play, so it does have some free to play elements in it. So, the idea is that you have stars and coins, which are different consumables. So... I've got one star here, I've got two stars here. These stars do convert into these stars. So these stars are useful for multiple different things. One thing they're useful for is getting extra pins at the end of levels, but they only cost like one star each. So even if you finish a level, you'll probably replace a, um, a star you used to, f to finish it. I apologize. Also, you can use stars to unlock things for the swarm mode. So yeah, you have to use stars to unlock these guys. So yeah, there's a lot of different different bugs in this game. Let's go to the store. So there's the firefly, the bee, the dragonfly. There's the ladybug. There's the firebug, which leaves what is basically a circle of fire that things can pop on. And you've got the locust, which call more in. And of course, there's more to find because this game is actually fairly long. So we are going to get some. We're going to unlock the locusts here, and we're just going to put them in play there. So you may think that this game's a bit of a grind. Well, it's not really. Well, I mean, let me try it again. You may think this game's a little bit free-to-play-ish, where it tries and steal your money, or at least make you pay. Well, this is what Swarm is designed to counter counteract. Swarm lets you go into any... Well, no, Swarm doesn't let you go into any level. Swarm lets you play an endless cycle of... Bog, pop Bug Zap where you can be constantly working on earning both extra stars and extra coins. So you take the pins that you're given, and you try and get the highest score possible. So, if you want a quick and easy way to earn extra stuff, a little bit of a technical glitch there, if you want a quick and easy way to uh, earn the extra stuff, like the, like the extra stars or the extra coins, you can, bu you can buy them, clear as day, and if you don't want to buy them, you can come to Swarm. And you can try and earn the extra stars and coins over a small amount of time. So as you can see there, I earned a star, and if I keep playing Swarm mode, I can keep earning more stars, along with, you know, actually attempting to finish the levels. So the game doesn't isn't actually that unfair. It gives reasonable amounts of stars and coins. There are there are times where it feels like upgrades can take a while. I mean, like look at this. The pin upgrades are 1500 each, but you do get increased values of currency as the game goes along. So we'll just hop back into Beach 15 and see if we can beat it and unlock a few new levels. Come on, come on. Yes, there we go. Whoops. Okay, now I need to get this right, otherwise I am going to lose horribly, so do it now. Come on, come on. Damn it! <laughs> uh, this game creates that sort of thing in ya. But again, we can continue with two pins, so we'll just do that and get ourselves a bonus round. Pop a bunch of the... <laughs> well, that wasn't a bunch of them, was it? Yeah, sometimes this game feels like you can try and, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Make you buy something for three stars. But again, if we go to the upgrade shop, pins will deal double damage, get an extra pin for bonus rounds. Get one extra pin in Swarm, yeah. You can buy upgrades and make things easier. 
But sometimes it can feel like it's trying to make you spend money, but it's really not if you give it the opportunity to let you continue on through and earn more stuff. So as we can see here, we need to pop 18 bugs in this level. We'll start from here. That was probably a bad place to... Oh, There are also tough bugs that take two hits each to defeat. Those guys can be bastards sometimes, but... It's not too much of an issue. Also, the dragonflies are bastards sometimes because they go for the big invincible guy. And it's like, why? Are you, what are you doing? Stop! So let's see if we can get three bugs in... Okay, well, we got the 18 we needed, but that's, that's not going to get us more than one star. To be fair, this is a free-to-play game, so making you feel like... Well, not making you feel like you have to pay, but enticing you to pay is indeed part of this game's design philosophy, or at least that's what it's supposed to do. I can understand why people might be a little bit upset at how free-to-play it may feel at times, but... Again, I just... It doesn't feel so egregiously horrid in its free-to-play gameplay design that I can tell it off for saying... For making it feel like a free-to-play game, or at least a relatively fair free-to-play game, all things considered. Alright, so I've got... I've got... Okay, this one's obvious. Sometimes it gives you puzzles like this, which are really obvious, but... You know, it's fun. I'm enjoying it. Even just these little puzzles here that make me feel smart. And of course, we can always get upgrades to make this a lot more easier than it is. So we've got Pyreflies here. So now we have to tap them exclusively in order to get more bugs to come in. See, I can't, can't tap any of these. So Pop Bug Zap is free to play on the PlayStation Store. I will go and check out the prices on the microtransactions after this level, so you can have a look for yourself. But it's free to play, and it's actually pretty high quality for what it is. So, I'd, I see no reason not to actually recommend this to people who want a decent puzzle game. It's very enjoyable. It reminds me a lot of OMG Zombies. We'll give that another try. It reminds me a lot of RMG Zombies, where you spend... Where, where you're just waiting in order to try and get the... Let me, let me think this through. It reminds me a lot of OMG Zombies, where you're waiting cautiously to try and get the perfect combo starter. And I like that a lot. It, it has that little bit of just one more level thing about it, because I didn't realize I was playing this for about an hour until I looked up from my computer... Um, until I looked up from the screen and I was like... Hey, I've been playing this for an hour, haven't I? What the hell? So yeah, I've definitely been having fun with this, and I would definitely recommend everyone try it out. The free-to-play isn't too badly egregious, and the gameplay design itself is fun. There's no locked levels or anything, it's just a little bit of grinding to get any upgrades. And I imagine by the time you at least hit the wall where you have to grind in order to... Ad, um, advance your power-ups, which is probably going to be a pretty long time. I imagine you would have had enough fun anyway, even if you don't feel like grinding. Because I know I've had a lot of fun here. I'm probably going to keep this around. I might pick it up and play it every now and again. I just remembered that I was going to say I was going to go and check out the microtransaction trust. After this level, okay? I'm sorry. See, I, I love this little effect here. It's just... It's just the coolest, cleverest little effect. And yay! The train's still going! Woo! And all the, all the little effects you can buy tend to add on to these little cra these crazy little effects as well. It's fun. It's fun to... Damn it! Don't go for the thing you can't beat, you silly dragonfly. Oh, so close to three stars. Damn it. Alright, so we'll go back and we'll have a look at the microtransaction prices. So that PSM play pack, that's like 20 bucks. Uh, let's see, what does 12 stars cost? 12 stars costs about $2.79. 200 coins isn't gonna get, get, gonna get you far in this game, so let's check out 1,000 coins. 12.99. Hmm. It is a bit expensive. 
But then again, most of these free-to-play games are, so... You know, to be fair, they've got enough right for what they've done wrong doesn't really affect that much. I mean, especially since you can come back here and grind as many coins and stars as you want, and you can always go back and replay earlier levels for more stars with better upgrades, and... It's a fun game, so making people play Swarm over and over again, you know, it's a fun enough game to at least justify some of that grinding, and I really can't argue with that. It's fun, and it's not as egregious as many other free-to-play games are, and I do recommend you at least go try it out. This is available on PlayStation Mobile, again, for free. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.